Hi guys, it's Jen here at Check for Joy, and this time I'm reviewing The Night Manager by John le Carre. This is a British spy novel, and the main character, Jonathan Pine, is a concierge at these really fancy hotels. Um, so he's in charge of the night shift, hence the title, The Night Manager. And one night when he's in uh, working at a hotel in Egypt, he, this one woman comes down and asks him to copy some files for her, for her. And he does it, and when he looks at it, it's an invoice for a list of illegal arms sales. So weapons going to the bad guys. And Jonathan has to decide whether or not to pass on that information to a friend he has in the British Embassy or to just let it go. And he decides to pass on the information and that leads this leads to the series of events where he ends up spying on this big crime lord, Richard Onslow Roper. Um, and Roper is this character that is very charismatic and engaging and to the rest of the world he seems like this amazing uh, businessman. Um, He's a philanthropist, he gives away money to charities, and he seems like a good guy. Except that Jonathan has the dirt on him to prove that he is selling weapons to the enemy. And he might be, in, I think, involved with the drug trade. But Roper is really good at like manipulating the system and finding loopholes and getting other people to attach their names to these deals. So um, these governments can't get dirt on him. And there's also people who are working for Roper, you know, dirty cops and politicians who are in Roper's um, uh, pockets. And so trying to navigate around all of them to actually try to bring him down is what the story is about. And it's a lot of bureaucracy and what spying is actually like and trying to live a double life. Um, so the story focuses on Jonathan Pine and how he goes undercover and tries to gain Roper's trust and get into his confidences so that he can actually get like the good juicy details. And it's got suspense to it and like this, you know, anything could go wrong at any moment. Like all it needs to happen is one thing to slip up. And Jonathan could end up just getting killed by Roper's men or getting found out and having the operation go to shit. There was some suspense to it, but it wasn't like I was expecting, or is it? Um, I'm more familiar with like James Bond movies or like Get Smart or Mad from Uncle, and they're a lot more flashy and showy and adventuresome and a lot more like fighting. And there is a little bit of that stuff in here, but it's not a big part of it. Another character we have in here is Roper's girlfriend, Jeds, um, who Jonathan is like immediately attracted to. And he is trying, he's also very worried and concerned about Judd's because um, Sophie, who he loved in Cairo, ended up dead because he passed out information. So he's trying to protect, so Jonathan is trying to protect Judd's also. Um, so that's a big part of this book. And we have like Roper's son and how Jonathan works his way into Roper's confidences by uh, saving the kid from a kidnapping that was actually being staged just so Jonathan could gain trust. Like I found Jonathan and Roper and Judd's and the kids Danny and the kid Danny's like personality is really interesting and I wanted to know what was happening to these people. But a lot of the side characters like Roper's goons and the people in the British government and other um, spies and government agencies that are trying to work together to bring Roper down. Like, I just didn't care that much about them. There is so much detail in this book, and it's so well thought out, and it's so realistic, but it's just, like, I I don't care about all that realism. I want it to be fantastical and adventuresome and exciting. And this book just wasn't that. It wasn't what I was expecting. So I never really just... I never fell in love with this book. It kind of felt very... It felt like a lot of work to read this book and to remember what was happening and I wasn't drawn to it so I was definitely going off reading other things at the same time and I would just like legitly forget what just happened like I'd read a page and be like wait what is going on um 
So I did not love this book. I ended up finding an abridged audiobook for this and listening to that for most of it. And even then, like, I was still zoning out on what was happening on the audiobook. So this book was not for me. But if those descriptions and those spy, um, spy novels are your thing, then go for it. Um, there is a miniseries that is currently running on AMC here in the States. And I had already aired, I think, on BBC in Britain. But I watched the first episode and that's really interesting. And it cuts down a lot of the parts that are in this book I was just like zoning out of. And it's also easier to watch that stuff happening than to read it in a book. So I am definitely going to keep watching the rest of the miniseries. It's also only six episodes, so that's better. Um, but yeah, I never, not, this is not my book, guys. This is not my thing. So yeah. But peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.